Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we found how we discovered the order of the equation, of the reaction. Now we're going to take a look and see how we find the rate constant, the constant that determines how fast the reaction will take place. And uh, the way we do that is go back to our basic. Let's say we have a very simplistic equation where, uh, or reaction where we have reactant A turning into B and C. All right, since we know that the rate is equal to the reaction constant times the concentration of A, and of course that's assuming that this is A to the first order. In this case, I set up an example where it is. It's A to the first order. We could also then, of course, describe that the rate is equal to the change in the concentration, the negative of the change in concentration, because we want to make it positive, divided by the time elapsed, and that is equal to the slope of that equation. So here, if you have, for example, an, uh, an equation or a line or a slope that... Um, Hmm, a function, it's more like a function, that describes the relation between the concentration of the reactant and the time elapsed. There should be time on the horizontal axis. You can see that the reaction uh, changes over time. The slope represents the, the reaction rate, and so as the slope diminishes, the rate, of course, diminishes as well. The way we find the constant K, which determines how fast the reaction takes place, is as follows. We set up the reaction in such a way that we change our initial concentration of the reactant. So we'll start with a certain concentration, and then we measure the initial rate of the concentration. Then we change the initial concentration, we do the experiment again, but now instead of starting with a concentration of 1 mole per liter, we start with a concentration of 0.8 moles per liter, and we measure the initial reaction rate. And then we start, then we try with a lower concentration of 0.6 moles per liter. And again, we measure the initial reaction rate. And then we go down to 0.4 and measure the initial reaction rate, and 0.2 and measure the initial reaction rate. And so what happens is, as we start with lower and lower concentrations of the, of the reactant, we can see that our initial slope is less and less steep, which means that our initial rate of the reaction is smaller and smaller because we have less of the reactant uh, present. So what we do then do is we measure this initial reaction rate that would be the dotted line right here. You can see that the slope of the dotted line becomes less and less steep. What we can then conclude is that the constant, the rate constant, is simply equal to the slope divided by the concentration, which is the same as saying the rate divided by the concentration. Of course, we're talking here about the initial rate and the initial concentration, because that's what we're talking about here. This really means the initial concentration and the initial rate of the reaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide the initial rate by the initial concentration and see what we come up with. So here, the first one is going to be, um, and of course, it's minus times the initial rate. Yeah, I, I just looked up the, the fact that we probably want to put a negative there because we know that the rate is negative and the concentration is positive. And we know that the constant, the, the uh, reaction constant is positive. Textbooks tend to get a little ambiguous about that. So we just want to realize that if we're going to use the rate like this, we really do do mean the positive rate. What is the rate of the reaction so that k is a positive number? If you're going to use a negative number, then you need to put a negative in front of it to negate the negative. So just, uh, just so you realize that we're not being sloppy here. So k is going to equal the negative of the rate divided by the concentration. So let's say that at this point, the rate is minus 8 times 10 to the minus 4. And we divide that by the concentration, which is 1. And notice that in this, this case, you get a rate of 8 times 10 to the minus 4. Of course, that will be moles per liter. And because, um, no, that will be over seconds. Ah, now I'm being lazy about the signs. Okay. The uh, units here is moles per liter times seconds, and this would be this is moles per liter. Ah, there we go. Now I got it. Got to be careful about the units. All right, so we have moles per liter canceling out, and notice that the units will be 1 over second, so that the k, the units for k is 1 over second. But now we know what the value is. Now we go to the next stage right here. So now we lower the concentration. Now we go down to 0.8 moles per liter and we find out what our new rate is. So K for the second point is minus. We put in uh, minus 6.4 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per liter times seconds. And we divide that by the new concentration, which now will be 0 0.8, and that would be moles per liter. And notice we get the exact same value. This will also be equal to 
8 times 10 to the minus 4 per seconds. And then we do it for the next point. So now we grab this rate and this concentration and we see k is equal to the minus of minus 4.8 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per liter times seconds. And we divide that by the new concentration. In this case, it's 0 0.6 moles per liter. And again, we get the very same value for K, which is 8 times 10 to the minus 4 per second. Notice we keep getting the same value. If we were to graph this on rate versus concentration, this is the initial rate and the initial concentration of the reactant A, then you'll see that we'll get dots that line up like this and we get a straight line indicating we have that linear relationship. And again, the linear relationship is the rate or the slope to the concentration of the reactant A. And when we have that linear relationship, that's what K represents. It represents how fast the reaction takes place. Now, for a reaction where you have a faster rate for a certain concentration, then you'll have a larger number in the numerator, then you'll have a steeper slope and you have a larger K. If you have a situation where you have a slower rate, reaction rate for a certain concentration, then you have a smaller number in the numerator and you'll have a smaller slope or a smaller value for K. So K really represents how fast the reaction takes place and it represents the reaction rate divided by the concentration. And so that's how we determine the, what we call the rate constant for each reaction. Again, we tend to do it experimentally. We try different concentrations, see what the initial rate is, and then divide the initial rate by the concentration that we used. And if the number comes out to be the same each time, then that then becomes what we call the rate constant. And that's how we do that.